Congrats on the new house. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the Black Cast, and uh, excited to welcome back to the show the one and only Mr. Don Jameson. Thank you, sir. The one and only. And uh, for our visual audience, you can see that uh, he's got a fancy green screen, and it's the same background that he uses for that Jameson show, which is, uh, it alone is worth the price of subscription for Compound Media. But just in case you're not convinced, earlier this week, uh, Anthony did a show, uh, just his takedown of Stuttering John is enough, honestly. Uh, I don't know if you caught any of that, but... Uh, the Revenge that's... of Stuttering John, Owen Benjamin, and uh, who was the other one he did? Opie. And Opie, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, dude, three years going strong, man, over at Compound Media, and um, up to about 160 shows, and uh, obviously you've been... Well, you know, we just did Blackcast 500, but, uh, you know, 160 is good, too. <laughs> well, at Compound Media, that's, uh, you know... It's like dog years, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, we. Drama, uh, drama at the network. Yeah, that's true. Uh, no one at the at the Black Cast Network has ever punched anyone in the face yet. There's still time. Uh, we celebrated by having uh, John Lovitz on our 500th episode, and uh, I told them I'll, I'll keep it to an hour. And I tried to let him go a few times, but, uh, oh, he had stories. So we did like two hours and five minutes with John Lovitz. But don't worry, I won't take up that much of your time today. I'm not nearly uh, as interesting as John Lovitz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, he's a pretty interesting guy, that's for sure. Uh, and, you know, and then I realized, I'm like, I didn't even talk to him about news radio. You know, he did the last season of news radio yeah. and that's how he knows Rogan because Rogan was on that. And uh, I was just like, oh, that was, that was a complete oversight. I was just trying to, like, get him off. <laughs> Not literally trying to get him off the show. But, um, Don, one of the reasons I know uh, that uh, I wanted to talk to you this week in particular is because uh, Ready for Pre-Orders is terror Terrorizing Telemarketers Volume 7. Easy for me to say. And uh, I love this concept. Uh, when I was a when I was a younger man, prank calls were hysterical to me, of course, as they were for anybody. Love the Jerky Boys, uh, your pal Florentine, who you do these albums with. Also, people know him from Cranky Anchors. And there just somehow was a certain point when I got a little bit older, I was just like, "What's wrong with me that I feel bad for the people that are getting called?" You know, like when their friend sets them up, that's like worse for me, you know, than you like you just call a pizza place and be a dick. Uh, but what I love about terrorizing telemarketers is that they're asking for it, you know. So explain the concept, how seven albums in this concept works. Uh oh, it's apparently green. <laughs> there you go. You, yeah. It uh, disappears on the green screen for yeah, our uh, visual weird, listeners. Right? Yeah, there it is. Oh, no. Volume seven. Yeah, seven volumes of this. I mean, you know, here we go. Two middle aged. Jersey idiots uh, still <laughs> putting out Frank Call CDs. And I'm with you, man. I, you know, the, I love the Jerky Boys. You know, I, I got yeah. to know Kamal over the years. And, um, he, he, you know, he'll always be like, he'll be like, oh, I heard the new record, man. It's really good. But don't forget who the king is. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I mean, it was funny, you know, during the lockdown, I, like a lot of people, I did a lot of spring cleaning, and I found a whole box of comedy CDs I hadn't listened to in forever, and all the Jerky Boys CDs were in there. So, um, I, you know, I went on a binge for about two weeks of Jerky Boys calls and walking around calling everybody Sizzle Chest for a while. And uh, later nits, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and all that stuff. But yeah, Florentine and I were just, you know, we started doing these CDs because we we just wanted stories to tell each other when we went on on road gigs. You know, because we drive five hours, you know, the middle of Pennsylvania, you know, and you have to have something to talk about. So, uh, you know, we would tell, oh, you know, this telemarketer called and, you know, this is what I said. And we'd laugh about it. And, you know, you know, it took about a year before the light bulb went on. And I was like, maybe we should start rec recording these. I mean, if we're, <laughs> if we're just entertaining each other, maybe some other people yeah. will think it's funny. And, uh, yeah, listen, they deserve it. You know, they're, they're scum of the earth. They're, they're the COVID of phone callers. They prey on the elderly and and the vulnerable, so yeah, we uh, we get revenge on uh, on these guys for everybody else who actually you know goes to work during the day. They're productive members of society. Me and Florentine sit in his basement and wait for the phone to ring. 
And I heard uh, Florentine talking about it uh, a while ago that he, you know, before he decided to do it again, he didn't have a landline anymore, like most people. And then as soon as he plugged it in, it just started ringing off the hook. <laughs> and uh, that's when, you know, you realize like, oh, yeah, there's a great market for this. So there's a, a couple uh, that are out there, uh, a couple of, of the clips. There's one that I guess is the single, which is uh, it, it's the the COVID mask. I forget now what it's called. I had it in front of me a minute ago, but uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, that one. And then there's a, there's another one I want to ask you about in a second, but uh, explain the the concept to that. And uh, you know, the, uh, the, the real, I don't know. I can relate to it in real life is my point, but I'll let you explain it first. Well, it's just, you know, we, we obviously we, we want to make, make, make it totally absurd with, with, with all the craziness of, of the mask these days. And, uh, you know, one of the most important pieces of the puzzle for a telemarketer is getting certain information from you. So Jim answers the phone. And, of course, he doesn't have the information, but my brother could help me out with this. Can we, I put him on the phone, and that's me. I come on. Yeah. And I, have my, I just have my hand over my mouth like this, and all, all of a sudden you can't really hear me as well unless I want you to hear me well. And how much did you, how much did you what kind of mortgage do you have? I think it's what I'm saying. I'm having trouble making it out. Can you take the mask <laughs> off? And Jim's like, no, he's not vaccinated. I don't want him to take the mask off. I don't want to get COVID from him. You know? Yeah. And then we, you know, it gets more absurd as the phone call goes on. And, uh, you know, I basically, you know, say, you know, I saw on CNN there's a variant you can get through the phone, and I don't want to give it to the guy. And, <laughs> He, of course, has a complete meltdown. You can't give it to me over the phone. I got heard it on CNN. So uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And, you know, the probably the first five times we tried it, people just hung up because they're like, I can't right. hear you goodbye. But just, yeah, you, yeah. Know, you, got, you know, you got to get these these hot tempered telemarketers and uh, we got the perfect guy. So that's the yeah, that's the hit single off the off the album, the first single. Yeah, which uh, I think uh, any kind of telemarketing, you probably shouldn't have a short fuse. You know, I, I can't imagine, you know, customer service would never be my strong suit. Like I worked I worked at a, a chocolate sh a chocolate store at the, the outlets, the Woodbury Commons uh, up uh, outside of the city. And it was just like, uh, no, I, I can't interact with the general public to that level. You know, I was like, I was in college. I needed a gig, <laughs> but it was just like, I was like, I was getting, I was you know, I was like making fun of customers occasionally when they're just like, uh, I was like, no, I wouldn't eat that. And he's like, well, you should. It's it's a good treat. I'm like, no, no. You know, <laughs> just dumb conversations like that. That's why I, I talked to to Lovitz about this. The perfect job for me was I worked at the Renaissance Festival uh, one summer when I was in high school. And we were encouraged to actually be mean to people because it's like, oh, it's but it's you do the accent and the, it, they want it. I don't think in 2022 they let you be mean to customers at the Renaissance Festival, but in 1992 you definitely could. And I was like, oh my god, this is the perfect job for me, you know? Yeah, you could get away uh, with calling women wenches back then. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, actually. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, back in the 90s, they, women liked being called wenches. Now it's a different time, but so obviously that's the gold in finding these people. Uh, and. One of the other ones that I heard was, I guess, I think it was for solar panels and you were supposed to make this guy think you were his supervisor, <laughs> but just there's like a nugget in there that you could have never planned for. The guy pronounces roof as rough. So it's yeah. just like, you're like listening to this. You you must like look at Florentine and be like, I can't believe we're getting you know this guy to say rough, right? Talk a little bit about that one, that uh, that track yeah. on uh, terrorizing telemarketers in line <laughs> seven. Yeah, so solar panels, a guy calls him about um, selling us solar panels. And it's funny, man, like this, this sort of, we haven't done a CD in about five years. And I noticed that all the different telemarketers that have been calling in all at the beginning, say who they are, what company they're with, and then they say, and I'm calling you on a recorded line. So and yeah. that must be some new legal jargon they have to say. So so in my in my brain, I go, they're all saying on a recorded line. I go, so that means somebody's listening. I go, so why, that could be me. I'm going to, next call you take and I'll break in as the person supervisor and we'll see what happens. <laughs> and, and yes, the guy wanted to sell solar panels for the roof. And then I, you know, I have to come on the phone and I go, uh, Leonard, this is your supervisor. 
Uh, we don't say roof at this company. We say roof. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then I, you know, I, I click off. And then Jim's like, is, is that coming from your end? He goes, no, it's not from my end, but you're on a recorded line. You even said at the beginning of the call. He goes, well, it's not on my end. And Jim's like, I'm on a cell phone. It's not on my end either. And I'm like, then I break back in, of course. And I'm like, Leonard, this is your supervisor. Let's close this sale, buddy. Let's go. Let's get this going. <laughs> he starts yelling at me, you know. And finally, at the end, I fire him. Uh <laughs> And I wonder if he just didn't go into work the next day thinking he'd actually been fired. Yeah, His real supervisor is like, where the fuck is Leonard? <laughs> so uh, if uh, any of this, and for our, our audio audience, I'll put uh, some snippets uh, later uh, in the episode so that they'll get to hear it. Uh, and if people want to pre-order this, this will be available later in September, right? What's the actual release date? Uh, the 16th, Friday the 16th. Okay, so yeah, by the time people hear this, it'll just be days away. And if they want to pre-order it, where do they go to do it? Um, I don't know. Just like go to Amazon and uh, it and works. it's on all the streaming services. Yeah. And then we'll. So have if you want an actual CD, you can go to Amazon. Uh, and uh, I I assume if you and uh, you and or Florentine have any uh, any gigs coming up, maybe you'll have a box of those in the trunk when you're doing your five hour drives together. Yes, that's what we, we we take people out to our trunks. And we, other than that, we we don't want to bring them into the club. Um, no, 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 no. Just be like shaky dealings in, in in the back of a parking lot. Um, right, because then you don't have, then you don't have to cut in anybody at the venue. It's like well, we're selling them out of the trunk. The T-shirts we sell in the venue, but the CDs yeah. are uh, there in the trunk. Um, yeah, no, I know the the link you sent to me earlier. It was on Apple Music, so it's on all the, find it. Yeah, yeah, all the streaming services. And you know, we're look, we're in, we're pushing people if if they like this kind of uh, childish stuff um, as much as we do to pre-order it because you know then when it comes out on the 16th, it, we, we want to come out to number one, have a number one comedy album in the country. Um, prank calls from two middle-aged men. The number one comedy album. I mean, that's that's it, you know, yeah, that's the best revenge you could get. And create a situation where the Grammys will have to nominate this in the comedy category because last year, or no, it was earlier this year, Louie won, and they're like, we're not going to put that on TV. You know, <laughs> we 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 don't we don't want we don't want to hear what Louie thinks. And uh, you know, that's a and it's 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 great though because. I don't know. I mean, as a kid, I loved comedy albums and a lot of times they weren't, you know, there were times where it would just be somebody have a special on HBO and then the album was basically the same material. But when it wasn't that, it was like, oh, this is like a whole new hour. Uh, somewhere in this garage, I have a cassette of Dennis Miller's The Off-White Album from uh, 1988. And uh, the amount of times I listened to that, the way that I... I learned how to speak publicly because of like when he would take inflections, you know, like you take a pause here and then that's where the joke is. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously guy, you know, really well, Dice had some of like just the, the most iconic albums of the eighties and, you know, Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy, they have comedy albums that we can't say the names of at least one yeah. Richard Pryor album. Yeah, for sure. And you can't say the names of the tracks on an Eddie Murphy album that I'm thinking of right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> You know, and uh, I don't know. I mean, the comedy album is, I don't know, it's a bit of a, I guess, a lost a lost art. But I guess because everybody has, you know, either they have a streaming special or I know Florentine put his on his YouTube channel. But uh, this is not, it's not stand up. It's like, it really is. It does take you back to like Jerky Boys, you know, just the idea of like, what's going to happen to the the idiot who calls them next, you know? Let's so, say everybody uh, hates telemarketers, whether you're yeah. eight years old or you're 80, because they're a nuisance. So, yeah, they really are a great target. You know, nobody likes them. But, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we we put these people through the ringer. And, um, you know, I do. I know some people do. They feel bad for the telemarketers sometimes. But, um, you know, just remember, these are the people who call your grandmother and say, oh, you know, we want to put solar panels on your roof. And, and then she'll go, what? What'd you say? Yes. And then next thing you know, she's, you know, they took 10 grand on her credit card. So um, they are scum and they deserve uh, all the, <laughs> the, the, the cranking and yanking that they deserve. I don't want, I don't want you to have to give away any trade secrets, but because they call you, 
does that change having to get releases in any way? Or uh, do you still have to go through the process of like then calling them back like, hey, Leonard's going to need to sign this? Or, or do you have to go through that whole process? Technically, on an incoming call, you don't. But we, you know, we okay. just to cover our butts, we, we do. But it's okay. d d sometimes it's you got to wait a few days because we <laughs> we had a guy on volume five who threatened to come down and blow our head off with a shotgun. We had probably had to wait two weeks before we called back. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so I, th I think a couple people just uh, added uh, volume five into the cart now because like also get that. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's it's got to be great. And, and look, I know you uh, still regularly put out your own stand up albums. Was uh, Denim and Laughter the last one or is there yeah. one since then? that? Yeah. So uh, obviously, uh, do you approach it differently than, you know, you would I don't know. I mean, is it just, do you go through it and go like, you know, this works on the stage and maybe if people could see me, do you like listen to a stand up recording in a way differently than you would if it was like going to be for YouTube or something? Like, do you, ha do you have to really tailor make it a lot? Or do you feel like a lot of, a lot of your jokes about, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the pictures of the guys from poison, you know, that, that works whether, whether they see you or not. Right. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, you try to make it obviously is um, not, I, I'm not a physical comic, so I don't really worry that much that, you know, people who just listen to one of my comedy CDs or they stream it, they're not going to miss a lot of stuff. And then right. any, anything visual I try to put into the, the premise, you know, even like, I, you know, um, you know, I do a bit about the band Guar and you know, obviously in a comedy club, there's going to be a very small percentage of people who, who know who Guar are, but the way I set it up and explain about the monster yeah. costumes and the blood squirting and the giant penis and all that, then pe now people have a visual in their head. So then it makes sense, you know, even if they don't know Guar, they, like, the joke still works. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, then when you listen back to the material and you want to put on a record, there's some stuff where you're like, yeah, I did something physical there in the heat of the moment and got a big laugh, but it won't translate on the record so you just you just pop it out but you know i'm yeah. just you know i'm just to stand there at the mic kind of guy so i don't you know a lot of that stuff really doesn't you don't need to see me as much as uh as hear me so so you uh you've you've taken a couple steps back from the carrot top era of your career <laughs> yeah well that's right the, the only yeah the, i have um I used to have a trunk in my trunk, and now I just have <laughs> CDs out of there. You just have CDs in the trunk. My trunk of pop. You know, the funny, the, one of the most surprising things that I ever learned working with Dennis Miller all that time was that when he started out, he wasn't a prop comedian in that sense, but he had like bits where he would use a lot of like charts and graphs, and they were part of jokes. And he, you know, so he was, it was a visual comedian in that way. And then at some point he was just like, it was like, he'd have to like check his luggage and he could never do carry on. And he's like, what am I waiting for these dumb jokes for, yeah. you know? And uh, I, I haven't ever actually seen Carrot Top live, uh, but I do understand, you know, obviously tremendous success. I've heard people rave about him. And I also know that it's not like just a string of props anymore. You know, I think that uh, there's, there's a lot going on and, I mean, that guy's been doing Vegas for like 20 years, so yep. bless him for it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm in I've Vegas. heard your pal, your pal Eddie has had him on his uh, show. Eddie Trunk has, and you know, the guy likes, you know, loves rock and metal and all that. So uh, seems like a good guy. He just, he just kind of gets a bad rep for, you know, being the prop comic and also being the object of uh, derision in the one of the most famous Norm Macdonald clips from Conan, where uh, Courtney Thorne Smith was promoting the Carrot Top movie, and uh, you know Norm just kind of piled on. But uh, you know, seems like a seems like a good guy, and you know what? Even he thinks that that's funny. So that's that made me like him. He's like, of course that's funny. It was it was the Carrot Top movie, you know? So yeah, right. And he's had a twenty year residency in Vegas, and he's a multi yeah. multi multi millionaire. So. Uh... Yeah. You know, hey, Miller, Kiss couldn't even Kiss couldn't even do their last residency in Vegas because they didn't sell enough tickets. So obviously, uh, obviously, there's uh, something to be said for it. Uh, well, uh, I'm excited to hear uh, the entire Volume Seven. And uh, you know, as we're uh, talking about new albums, one of the things that I messaged you about, uh, I I recently I went to the Stadium Tour, which for people that don't know, the Stadium Tour 
It's uh, co-headline Def Leppard Motley Crue here in LA. Motley Crue went on last. Before that, Poison. Before that, Joan Jet. And if you get there before four o'clock, you see a band named Classless Act. Uh, I was still parking. And I, even though I tried to see that band, I got there just in time for Joan Jet, and I got to see her. I'd never seen Joan before. So uh, it, it was a great long day, but a good in a good way, because uh, the venue that they had here in L.A., SoFi Stadium, where the Super Bowl was this year, has a roof. And it was a just miserably hot day, but it didn't matter. So um, I went to that, and uh, did you did you catch one of the East Coast shows for that this year, or did you not make it out there to the stadium tour? Did not make it. So uh, I'd seen all the, except for Joan Jett, I'd seen all those bands at some point before. And, uh, you know, Motley, it's kind of what everybody has been saying. You know what you're going to get at Vince at this point. He He was never Sammy Hagar in the way that he sang. And it's like, you're going to get Vince. Vince was great. Vince is what I wanted. Everybody gave me what they, what I wanted from a Motley Crue show. There was smoke and explosions and lasers, all the shit that you want from an arena show. So anybody that wants to complain, that's fine. I will say that for whatever reason, the bass was up so high. And I've heard so many people say that. And I'm like, must be, must be in the rider, you know, <laughs> because it's like, yeah, you got to crank the bass. But uh, the reason I'm bringing it up was uh, because uh, Def Leppard was there. And look, Def Leppard, I've seen them, I don't know, probably like five times in the last decade. Always great. They always deliver a good show. Seem like a great bunch of guys. But they do have a part in the middle where they break it down for a little bit, do some acoustic numbers, including something from their new album. Now, you and I, when I've been on your show, that Jameson show, uh, we will play a little game where we'll talk about great bands, terrible songs. I think that's what it's called. I don't You have a whole production for it, which has yeah. like poop noises now. And... It, it kind of started because I, I think it was, I think you actually had Florentine on and you guys were talking about how Def Leppard have that song, Make Love Like a Man. And it's just like, they have so many great songs, even some of their later stuff that's a little softer and popular, there's still some good songs on there, you know. Pour some sugar on me if I'm at a strip club, great. That's exactly where I want to see that song. But they have a song on the new album called uh, this guitar saved my life. And I feel like that needs to be the B side of make love like a man in terms of like bad songs. And they do it like they have like a 70 minute set. And I'm like, is anybody buying a ticket hoping that they get to hear uh, this guitar saved my life? Now, I for your sake, I hope you haven't heard that song yet, but uh, I feel like you might have. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's it's so <laughs> cringeworthy. And it, isn't that, is yeah. that the duet, right? That's yeah. the other part. It's a duet with Alison Krauss, yeah. who's not has no relation to the rock world whatsoever. Um, yeah. So, so who's do, who's the singing with it? She's not on the tour with them. Like, why would you no. do that song? It's it's not a hit on the radio. You don't have the yeah. other person who you're duetting with, and it's it's a, a sleep inducing ballad. Yeah. See, they also play the actual single from the new album, a song called Kick that just, it sounds like a T-Rex song. It's fine. That's their their thing. It's catchy. That doesn't bother me. You got to you know, play a new one so people know you have a new album. But, but don't, like, you know, sometimes you'll hear bands say, like, we don't play new songs because we don't want people to go to the, the beer line. I was just like, I don't know. I mean, I think you play that song. People are rushing to the vomitoriums, you know. In, in they, must have because... a, they must have a deal with the beer companies, like, all right, you're going to get a major <laughs> surge at, at 45 yeah. minutes in our into our set, and we'll take 10% kickback on all the people we send to concession yeah. when we play like, One My Guitar Gently <laughs> Weeps or whatever that song is. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And, you know, <laughs> but, you know, when it's a band you love and they play a song you don't like, even one of the ones we talk about, it's whatever. When it's a band you like a lot, but they're not your favorite band, and then they do one of those... Like you have to have some of those moments. I won't call you out if there's if there is a moment that you remember. But if you're gonna if you want to share, we'll take it. But uh, you know, sometimes you're just like, oh, I like this band, but oh god, they're playing that song, you know. And it's like, I might as well go get a beer, check out the the merch line. I just saw the Stones in Vegas back in November. I literally spent 90 minutes in the merch line, and uh, I yeah, <laughs> because I was I was taking my dad. It was his first time seeing the Stones. I'm like, I gotta buy him a T-shirt. You know, it's fine, but. I was just like, this is the time. This is the time to run back and grab my stadium tour T-shirt. 
But uh, I, I mean, what else can you do? You know, I mean, like you, you can't start you know, throwing things at the stage. You don't want to get kicked out. Right. When yeah. there's a truly bad song on, I guess, you, you know, go take a leak. Right. Or, or maybe or maybe you do want to get thrown out at that point. But, you know, <laughs> it's like it's like if you go see Aerosmith, depending on where you go see them and they always change their set list. And Aerosmith is yeah. still great. And I'm going to see him this week in Vegas because um, they start their residency. And um you know, they'll so once in a while they'll throw in, I don't want to miss a thing, you know, yeah. de again, depending on what, where and when you see them. But they'll sandwich it in between like no more, no more and rats in the cellar. So I, I'll take that. All right. You, yeah. What you gave me two deep cuts, you know, from your catalog. I get you've got to play the big hit in this territory yeah. that sold a lot or whatever. But at least you at least you bookended it with two amazing songs. I mean, yeah, if from like four new songs off the new album. Yeah. And like it's an acoustic breakdown. This is a festival. You, you know, there's no time for mellowing out, you know, especially when they go after Motley Crue, who has all the bells and whistles, you know, and easily as many hit songs. So, you know, you, you might want to just, you know, pull that part out and maybe, you know, throw in high and dry or whatever. I mean, I, I, Def Leppard should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for their first three albums alone. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, that whole thing is, it's, uh, you know, I looked at the set list and I was like, all right, they know better well, that, than me. That's the thing, because I saw them, you know, they toured with uh, with Kiss in like 2014, and then I saw them a few years later with Journey. The set list is almost exactly the same. The difference is like, what's the new song? Because to their credit, they put out new albums. I know Cheap Trick puts out new albums every couple of years. I like bands that put out new albums. Uh, the last Cheap Trick album I thought was great. The new Def Leppard album has a couple of songs that, that are all right. And I'm like, all right, I get it. Good that they want to still create. Uh, Aerosmith has talked about how they don't really want to make more. But uh, in terms of what you were saying, if they play Chip Away the Stone, they can go ahead and play all three of those Alicia Silverstone songs from Get a Grip. That's fine. Yeah. You know, I, if I have to make a trade like that, I'll take it. That's that's like I've seen them enough times where I'm like, that's still the one that that I know that they, is in the set sometimes but never when I see them <laughs> chip away the stone. So. Yeah, exactly. But, and they, by the way, they should, they, they should market that as the, 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 uh, the Alicia Silverstone three. Yeah. Put that out on a digipack for people. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. The, the, uh, the, the barely legal Alicia Silverstone is really what that was. You know, this the, you know, those, those three songs that all kind of sound the same and, there's a couple of good songs on Get a Grip, but th those ones, like I, if you start, if you played the first ten seconds of each of them, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one was which one. I'm like, wait, what is that? Jaded? No, no, Jaded is even a different album. It's crying is what I was thinking of. Crying. But your point about uh, about Aerosmith is that, yeah, I mean, I I know that there, you know, there are parts of the world where like they don't even know their '70s stuff, and there's places where it's like we have to play. I don't want to miss a thing or they'll be rioting. And, uh, you know, I, the last time I saw them was a while ago. They, they toured with slash. I saw them at the forum and they did play. I don't want to miss a thing, but uh, right before that was Kings and Queens. So it's exactly what we're talking about, yeah. you know? So I think the, I think they're smarter than some of these other bands. You know, I think Def Leppard actually thinks people want to hear some of these songs. They want to hear make love like a man, you know? <laughs> Somebody should just be like, Joe, nobody wants to hear it. Even the guys in the band don't want to hear Make Love Like a Man, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's their, um, that's their albatross, that song. And, uh, <laughs> but this, this new one's pretty bad, but, um, and I was never a big fan of the, you know, the hysteria songs, you know, sure. put some sugar on me and those, those kind of, um, you know, slick poppy hits. Uh, um, but, you know, uh, you know, the, the ladies like them. And, and uh, you know, when you go see them live and you, you sort of get into it, and you go, all right, yeah, all right, this song's kind of kind of OK. But um, I got way more questions about about Motley. Yeah, because uh, and especially particularly Tommy Lee, who the first five shows was could only play like four songs. Yeah. And then ran around the stage for the next 20 minutes shouting, I'm in pain. I can't play anymore. My ribs are all broken. Yeah. I can't, I can't even breathe. I'm in the worst pain ever. Uh, guys, I'm in pain. Show me your boobs. I mean, yeah. I'm in severe pain. I can't <laughs> even move. So I got 15 more minutes to, to milk this. And, yeah. but we're going to bring out Tommy Clefettos to finish the set. 
And then one day he just plays the whole set. Like five days yeah. later, the ribs. Yeah, it wasn't like there was a break in the tour, and then when it came back, he went in. Yeah, yeah you just you heard like yeah, he only did a few songs. He only did a few songs. Now I did the whole show, and uh, yeah, when I saw him, uh, he he had like a bit that. And I don't think it went over the way he thought it, it would. He had, I guess, you know, he had been very active on Instagram and he was talking about he wanted to uh, show everybody his wiener. Yeah. And he had a dog in his pants and he took it out. But he was legitimately trying to convince guys to take out their dicks and show them. And the cameras would cut of, you know, women had taken off their shirts. And he's like, yeah, yeah, boobs are all right. But isn't anybody going to show? I'm like, is this a bit or is it a cry for help? I'm like, what's going on with Tommy? You know, I'm like, I can't tell. look. And if, if he's embracing a new lifestyle, go ahead and take that stand too. I don't think that's it though. Just a little bit. I know about Tommy. And I was just like, I, I, yeah, the, that was like more distracting than anything else was, uh, you know, his, his time for shtick, you know, the, the Tommy Lee shtick, uh, you know, it was just like, everybody else must just, tolerate it like i can't imagine mick mars standing there and like this is really great i enjoy this <laughs> you know <laughs> well it, he had that he's 0 for 2 on on his comedy segment um of the stadium tour because the first bit was the ribs bit where he after the first couple of times where he just ran around and explained to the crowd how he can't even move because he's in so much pain as he ran all over the place then he actually brought out a giant tray of ribs with a pair of tongs and threw ribs, the rib, broken ribs out to the audience. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't hear that. That's yeah. crazy. Oh uh, yeah. That, so that one, yeah, that one went into the, into the, <laughs> into the toilet. And then he figured, all right, guys, I got a new one. I'm going to pull a wiener dog out of my pants, but I'll, you know, it'll be like, Hey, you want to see my wiener? Then I'll pull a dog out. Yeah. And I and, can't imagine and, there weren't crickets in the room when he pitched that. Yeah. What do I know? Yeah, I mean, Vince probably texted, you know, his business manager, like the checks are still clearing, right? And he's like, yep, okay, great. You know what? I'm not going to rock the boat, you know? And uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Look, I think it's the best thing about that show was the fact that it was a football stadium. And by the time Poison went on, it was like almost full. I don't know that it was like a sellout in terms of every seat full. But the place was full enough. You'd look around. There wasn't like huge empty sections. And yeah, it's Los Angeles. But still, for that kind of music to get this kind of spotlight, I don't know. I think that's great because, you know, even 10 years ago, I don't, you know, maybe you put that package together. You could probably have played maybe the Hollywood Bowl, but probably like the Greek here. You know what I mean? That would have been a much smaller and I don't know, I just think people just, you know, you go back to hysteria. That was the first Def Leppard album I ever bought. So it's like that era, you know, like uh, uh, Dr. Feelgood, you know, the stuff from like the late 80s. It's like, uh, it's like really a generation's classic rock. These are like the bands that they loved. Oh. And uh, I, I think I think it's great. And uh, I hope that, uh, you know, that there can be more tours like this, not necessarily th these same bands. And, uh, you know, like I said, I've seen Poison a few times and every time I see them, I forget like, oh God, they have some really great songs and they're just, they, you can see them having fun. And, uh, you know, uh, Brett Michaels doesn't take a, a, even like five seconds off, you know, he's just on the whole time and it's great. And, uh, you could tell, I mean, and you know, women much older than me, groups of them, like so excited when he came out and, you know, taking pictures and I'm just like, this is, this is, this is what it's all about. And uh, at a time when people are telling us that rock is dead, it's nice to be reminded that, uh, you know, you don't you don't sell 60,000 tickets if it's dead. So, uh, yeah. I, you know, so I, I don't know. Poison, poison is always great. And I, I saw Joan probably about 10 years ago and she was awesome. So um, although she it is sort of an oddball fit on the bill, but um, yeah. But apparently she's doing great out there and people coming in for it. And so, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, this hopefully sets a precedent for future tours. So another, you know, four, you know, four major headliner band tour. And then you bring along, you know, some young guns with you to open the show and play for the ushers. Um, but those <laughs> guys getting a lot of publicity. So, it, yeah. you know, it's worth it for them. And um, but yeah, um, but Motley, uh, you know, I, you know, still a fan of Motley. Obviously, you know, I got I got Nick Mars in a, a little trouble when they when they first announced the um, 
the reunion tour. That's right. Because I posted the clip on that metal show where I told him, you'll never come back. And he said, if I do, everybody on, on earth gets free tickets. <laughs> and, um, and Nick got a, was getting a lot of, a lot of um, uh, traffic to his social media from all over the world, wondering where their free take, where they pick up their free tickets, yeah. including all the guys in Steel Panther. And <laughs> <laughs> Nick Mars actually had to put a statement out the next day, like the next afternoon, saying, "All right, clearly when I was on that metal show, I was only joking around. Yeah, uh, there are no not going to be any free tickets, but we'd love to see. We hope to see you out there. So uh, yeah, it all worked out." No, I mean, and I get it for, you know, somebody that, you know, spent a ton of money to fly to like what was supposed to be their last show at the whiskey, you know, all that I can see being annoyed. But for me, I was like, oh, that's cool. I'll, I'll see them again. I love those songs, you know, and I mean, there is nothing after Dr. Feelgood in that set list. And uh, nobody wants that. You know, it's a little bit of a better understanding than some bands. They're like, we know what people are here for. Too Fast for Love, up to Dr. Feelgood. Good night. Here's a big explosion. That's it. You know. Right, they don't. They know not to play the ballad off of, of Saints of Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's true. But when I saw them on the farewell tour, they did do that. I forgot about that, exactly. and I was just like, oh no. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, and uh, look, I think it, I, I think it's uh, great. And you know, there was a. It didn't play L.A., but there was like a smaller version of that tour. Where what was it? L.A. Guns, Tom Kiefer, and your pals and Faster Pussycat. And I, I would have gone to that at a smaller venue, but for whatever reason, it didn't play L.A., probably because those bands all play L.A. enough, you know, oh. that they didn't need to do it as a package. But, uh, yeah, so hopefully just the realization, you know, I mean, uh, in my early concert going days, uh, they was, you know, a great memorable package tour, which was uh, our one of our mutual favorites, Alice Cooper. But the headliner was Priest and Motorhead. Metal Church, Dangerous Toys. I think those were the five bands. And that was like a whole day. But, I, you know, back then I didn't need a seat. I could stand general admission for five bands. Stadium tours, like I needed a nap between each band. But <laughs> uh, so, yeah, when you can get like, you know, bands that you're legitimately excited about, uh, you know, and the the all timer, of course, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, Faith No More, like that tour was just like, you know, so if it's going to be in a big venue, you got to, you got to kind of bring a lot for me. You know, I'd much rather see bands in the smaller venues. So hopefully we get more of those. Yeah. I told look, I told Mick, you know, which I say about any of these people, it's like, I know you don't think you're going to come back, but you will. Yeah. I, you know, I go, I don't, you know, I never thought they were trying to, Motley's trying to scam their fans because bands have done that in the past. I mean, you know, Thin Lizzy's famous for it. You know, they did a farewell tour with no intention of breaking up because they wanted to sell more tickets in America. Yeah. So, um, and then, then they en ended up breaking up anyway, but, um, but I, you know, th these guys get out of the limelight and we've seen it now a million times, right? They get out of the limelight for a year and they're, oh, they're like, Oh my God, I, I have no, no adoration, no adulation. Nobody's screaming my name that nobody, you know, no one's looking for me. And they, you know, it's hard to give up that, you know, performing is such an addictive drug um, when you don't have it for a while you go oh man so you know we've seen every band you know the who retired in 1982 they have dates on the books next yeah, by the way that's not an exaggeration they literally yeah. had a farewell tour in 1982 and uh 40 years later they're still out uh and whether they should be or not and uh, at least like ozzy tried to have a sense of humor about it because he had the no more tours in 92 and then the no more tours too but then I guess that was bad karma because he hasn't been able to tour with it. You know, he hasn't actually played any of those shows. Uh, you know, we're talking on uh, Friday the 9th. Ozzy played the NFL opener last night, speaking of uh, of SoFi Stadium here in Los Angeles. But to have watched on TV, you would think he played for eight seconds. Uh, they didn't show it. And uh, I mean, I can look, I can understand if, I, I don't know, an up and coming band played but it's Ozzy. Well, you think people are, are you think everybody's going to turn off their TV with the Prince of Darkness back on their TV? He only did two songs. He did a new song and he did Crazy Train. But you you don't think anybody wanted to watch Crazy? You, you think they wanted to see the the NBC halftime show? You know, it's not even the Monday Night Football halftime show. It's the NBC halftime show. And uh, I couldn't believe that they didn't show it. But I guess, you know, they have that belief that people don't want to watch rock. And that's why the halftime show has been so awful for at least a decade now. 
Uh, I don't know. Is, that must be what they, it is, right? They'd rather see Adam Levine's nipples <laughs> than see the Prince of Darkness. That's a sad commentary on the music scene. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And it was like, but it's like, this isn't even the Super Bowl. It's not like, oh, yeah, think about, you know, we could get $8 million more million in advertising if we don't show it. It was like, they just cut away for halftime analysis. Yeah, the uh, Bills are playing better than the Rams tonight. Let's go over to Ozzy, yeah. you know? <laughs> but... Maybe if Ozzy did some commentary. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They would have definitely done that, had that on there. Um, uh, 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 before uh, we wind things down, I know you've uh, been to uh, some of bullets. Yeah, <laughs> I know some of the good. Sh- uh, you've been to some great shows lately. Uh, I saw you last year. You toured with uh, with the Dead Daisies, and I think you just the other day saw them at at a great venue. Uh, it was the, it's the Vineland Theater, right? It's the Landis Theater. Landis, in Vineland. So in Vineland. Yeah, that's it. Because, yeah, I saw uh, friends that I have who have a uh, Kiss tribute band. They played there when I was back east, so I, I went to that venue. It was great. Yeah. It's just sort of like, you know, just kind of nestled on, like, one of those, you know, those long roads down near the shore. As, as So uh, how was that to uh, see those guys? Obviously, you know, they're touring with Chips Enough or with Enough's Enough. It's a, a downgrade from who they went on tour with last year, but, uh, you know. Enough's enough. It, Chip's still great, you know. No, no doubt about it. And it was great to see Chip and those guys, of course. And they did a, you know, they're they're doing their, um, you know, their Beatles set, um, you know, because they released that that album. Oh yeah. First, so they do the Beatles set, and then they do their, you know, they do the MTV hits at the end. And um, I didn't, you know, so I was back with Glenn and Doug and everybody, and you know, Brian Tishy's back in the band now. I haven't seen Brian in probably five years at least, so it was good catching up with him. But they had the set list like taped up everywhere, and I was trying not to look at it because I really wanted to just go out. You know, I hate looking at set lists first. I'm, I want to go out and experience it. So, yeah. uh, but I, I did. I did want to know if they were going to do "Mistreated," the Deep Purple song, because that's the that's the spotlight right in the middle of the set where, you know, Glenn just opens up his voice, and you you know, the, the hair on your arms is standing on end for you know eight minutes or whatever, you know, however long the song is, because he, the vocal gymnastics in that song are phenomenal. Um, but as soon as Tishy went into the drum solo, I knew like that's when Glenn gets rest his voice so he could yeah. come out and mistreat him. And he did not fail and it was brilliant. And um, the new album's great. And they played a bunch of new songs off the new album. Sounded great in the mix with the old songs. I think they only did like two Karabi era songs. Oh, okay. So, uh, you got two albums now that Dave Glenn Hughes. And um, yeah, they were phenomenal, man. Just uh, an awesome show. And yeah, that venue is killer. So, yeah, no, and uh, they're, they're going to be here in LA, uh, actually at that same venue, the Vermont, which I, I went there and I still don't remember where it is. So I, I'll have to find it again if I'm going to go see them. But uh, yeah, that'll be, uh, that that's great though, because that was definitely. I saw an earlier iteration of them. Uh, I think they might have been the first band on that Kiss Def Leppard tour. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were fine. But then adding Glenn, it was like a whole next level. So I was glad that I, I saw that show. And the fact that he's still in and they did another album. It's a lot easier. Look, it's a lot easier to be excited about your band when it has Glenn Hughes in it, you know. Um, and uh, I wanted to, are, are you planning on, seeing uh alice cooper during this next run because of the simple i i saw him back in april uh at the greek theater and i don't think i was planning on going again he's got a casino gig coming up but now that nita strauss left and kane roberts is back in the band uh i mean i i i love that era the constrictor raise your fist and yell era and yeah. it's not like they didn't play songs with that with with nita or with orianti but I'm like, I think I need to go because I never saw him with, uh, you know, with the Rambo specimen that was mid 80s. Uh, Kane Roberts, are you planning on or have you seen uh, Alice since he got back together with uh, Kane? No, but I'm going to see him. I'm going to be uh, back in Vegas again in Oct- uh, early October. OK. And playing out there with Ace Frehley. So that'll be great. And yeah, it'll be my first time seeing him ever with Kane. Um, yeah. I never saw that version of his band. Uh, back in the in the mid '80s, when he, when when he had it, but um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, Alice told me many times. He goes, he goes, you know, the, you know, the funniest person I know is Kane Roberts. 
Oh, wow. And you think like this big giant muscle Rambo looking yeah. guy, that that's the funniest guy ever. Like, <laughs> you know, he's in the gym 14 hours a day. How does he, how has, how does he fine tuned his sense of humor? I can't, if, you know, I mean, if I saw Dennis Miller all pumped up, you know, you know, and jacked up and, and, and cut abs, I wouldn't be expecting, you know, the, the kind of wit and wisdom that he's, uh, given us over the years, but apparently Kane well, Kane Roberts is uh, is quite the funny man. Maybe when Kane Roberts is at the gym on his earbuds, he's listening to all seven volumes of Terrorizing Telemarketers, oh, and that's right. why he has such a great sense of humor. Full <laughs> so circle, bring friend. it all uh, full circle. Um, I don't have a a ton of shows that I'm going to see this year, but I am going to see Wasp for the first time, and honestly, they haven't played in the U.S. in a while, and. Uh, I didn't get good insight as to whether or not, you know, Blackie has taken a little bit of a step back. You know, they stopped playing Animal, the song that most of us know is Fuck Like a Beast. And I'm like, man, if I'm going to see Wasp for the one time ever and they don't do that, I'm going to be a little bit bummed out. Uh, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I'm I'm excited about it, you know, and like that. That's one of those tours that I think that, you know, the expectations for it, the Wasp tour were that, yeah, it would probably do well. But uh, I, I know somebody who handles PR for that, and uh, there's a lot of dates sold out or sold really yeah. well early on. So, uh, you know, I, you that must just be because they've been gone for so long, right? That's why there's such like, you know, like, like literally I never, yes, I could have seen them probably in like the late 90s or early 2000s, but it wasn't, I don't know, it, it, there weren't a lot of opportunities. So it must just be people like me who are like, you know, I never saw Wasp, I kind of want to make sure I see them. You feel like... How much does that help a band who, you know, staying away for a while? Most bands over tour. So, yeah, yeah I mean, if you can afford to stay away, you know, it, it does. It really helps out a lot. I remember when David Draymond came on that metal show and he said, you know, I'm shutting Disturbed down for five years. You know, we've we've yeah. just been in that cycle of writing, recording, touring, writing, recording, touring. He goes, I want to give us a break. I feel like we're we're burning out our audience. And the instant that he they came back, they went from a band that, you know, sold out like the summer sheds, fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand, to full full size arena, you know, selling out thirty thousand plus tickets because people were like, Oh my God, it's great, they're back. We had a break and now they're back. Wasp has made a lot of money in Europe, you know, so that's why he could afford like, yeah, no, I don't want to play that. I don't want to slug it out in the clubs in America, yeah. you know, so I'll just go play Europe and, you know, I can make my money that way. And then, you know, so now is sort of the, the time. I think people think are probably thinking ahead, like this, maybe this is the last time we're going to see them or at least see them still kind of at the top of their game. And they got Armored Saint with them, who if people have never seen Armored Saint, I mean, they are they are so great live. I mean, they're going to give Wasp a run for their money. Yeah, which is, is what I think you want. It, you know, you want to see the billing where, look, it doesn't have to be, you know, your second favorite band. But if you see like, oh, I got to make sure I get there on time, then they've they've put the tour together. And yeah, it was the same thing. I saw the, that they'll have Armored Saint. And then there's like one or two dates where I think Michael Schenker's also on it. Yeah. So it's like, and you, you know, you got to get there really early then. To, you don't want to miss any of that. So uh, is there, do you have anything big coming up this year in terms of uh, attending? Uh, obviously, there are plenty of shows that people can find uh, on, on social media, at Don Jameson shows. But uh, uh, do you have, is there anything pending that you're looking forward to? Because for me, it's really, it's like Dead Daisies, I'm certainly, it'll be great to see them again. But uh, the Wasp, like, those tickets went on sale like almost a year ago. So like I've had that circled for a while, you know? Yeah. Um, just, you know, I, I'm hosting a couple of uh, Metal Blade 40th anniversary concerts. Um, actually, Wednesday the 17th at the Space in Las Vegas. I'll be hosting uh, Sacred Reich um, playing there. And, uh, you know, 40 years of Metal Blade Records, which is amazing. I, you know, I do my comedy albums with Metal Blade. So yeah. uh, I'm going to be out and about. Uh, doing some stuff with them. So, you know, if you see a Metal Blade 40th anniversary show, come on out and check it out. If, if you love this kind of music that uh, Christian and I love, for sure. And then, uh, no, no other, you know, just a lot of comedy club dates. And, you know, I, you know, I end up jumping on a rock tour. Um, so there's a couple of things in the works for that. But no, just excited to put this record out. Um, the end of this week on the 16th, Terrorizing Telemarketer 7. And then probably in January, February, I'll record a new stand-up album. So, you know, that'll take us, you know, through next year. 
Yeah, no, and it's uh, it's great. And yeah, you obviously you get to you know do the Monsters Rock Cruise. They just had the Monsters on the Mountain, uh, the second one. And uh, yeah, it must be uh, great to just kind of go, especially when you, you know, you get to go and you get to see all the bands. But if I were to just go and, you know, like, oh, look at what's on this bill, you know, uh, and uh, I, I can't even imagine the, uh, you know, what the, that cruise scene is like, the, the actual Monsters of Rock cruise. I uh, still can't convince my wife that that's a, a good reason for me to be away from the kids for an entire week. But, uh, you know, one day. It's a two STD minimum, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I think that's maybe that maybe that's really where the concern comes I'd from. Say, I would say, you know, if, if you if you if you didn't catch an STD from any of these bands in the 80s, now's your chance. <laughs> I remember when I was talking to you earlier in the year, you know, we referenced your your friend and former that metal show co-host, Eddie Trunk. You know, he goes on all these cruises and he goes on like that Monsters of Rock cruise and then he does like the Prague cruise and that's where he gets COVID. It's like yeah. it's, the, it's the fucking Prague cruise. It's like, oh, wait, I, that's the one, that's the one I could have skipped, you know, but uh, I don't know. And it's uh, here's the thing. You know, just a quick reference to COVID. It's like it's kind of great to have it in a way where it's like, no, that show's still going to happen. Uh, maybe it'll get, you know, shows get rescheduled, but it's not like you're not having as many bands blow out an entire tour. You know, I mean, that stadium tour, there was a point where it was going to actually happen last summer. Obviously, originally it was supposed to be two years ago. Yeah. And then there was a point last year where they're like, "Nah, we can't do it yet. And so there's still a part of me that's always like, oh, that'll be fun to go to that show if it actually happens. So it's a little bit less of that. And it's just it's great to know that, uh, you know, you can actually get out there and see stuff and, you know, just have fun. That's that's all I'm looking for, you know? Well, yeah, and, and uh, yes, it, it's a totally different vaccination after you've been on the Monsters of Rock cruise <laughs> and then the, it's, the Frog cruise. It's it's like one of those cocktails where uh, you have to spend a week, like you, you're gonna get, you know, a little bit of everything. So you have to be prepared for all of it. Uh, well, Don, it's always uh, a treat to get a chance to talk to you uh, on shows, on your show, that Jameson show on Compound Media uh, over here on the Blackcast, or taking the road trip down to Princeton to uh, see you at, uh, at, at the hotel there. And I remember when I saw you in Princeton, I brought my friend Dan with me and we pulled up and there was a prom upstairs. And uh, I had to think, which one of these events do I more want to go to? Uh, <laughs> the, the Don Jameson show or the prom. And then I realized uh, I'm in my mid forties. So I'll be going to the comedy show. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, Believe me, I was torn as well. <laughs> uh, and it, it's just Don Jameson.com, right? I, I, I yeah. Don't, I don't, yeah. And it's J A M I E S O N. So uh, that's the important thing. Terrorizing telemarketers available for pre-order. By the time you're watching and listening to this, it might be regular, ready for regular order. So just get it, listen, have some laughs. Our audio audience, you'll get to hear some of those laughs on the way out. Uh, thanks so much, Don. Thanks to everybody for helping us celebrate 500 episodes of the Black Cast as we continue to milk that for all it's worth. Uh, we'll do it again next week in uh, episode 505. We'll see what that'll bring us. Uh, but until then, please remember to subscribe, B-L-A-D-T-C-A-S-T. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Christian DMZ. And we'll see you next time.